Hello students, in today's session let us learn about ecological succession. The biotic communities are not stable, but undergo regular changes in a definite number with passage of time. Every community undergoes a series of changes until a group of organisms is established which can live and reproduce most successfully in the area. The change of plant and animal communities in an orderly sequence in an area resulting in establishment of stable or climax community is called ecological or biotic succession. A climax community does not evolve further because it is in perfect harmony with the environment of the area. The interaction among organisms in a community collectively termed biotic factors influence the structure, composition and function of a community. The physical and chemical factors of an area determine immediately the kind of community that can be supported there. Bare rocks and shifting sand dunes are unlikely support community due to lack of nutrients and water. The interacting organisms of the community slowly change the physical and chemical nature of the substratum as well as the factors of the environment. The process of change is called reaction. It includes weathering of rocky substratum, binding of soil particles, holding of water, decreasing the effect of wind and keeping the substratum moist and cool in summer or warm in winter. For example, the lichens growing on a rock produce acids that corrode the rock surface and help in holding fine particles of rock and sand. The decaying organisms metabolic waste and selective intake of chemicals change the composition of the substratum. As a result of reaction, the habitat becomes less favorable to the existing biotic community and more favorable to some invaders. This builds a new biotic community. The later sets in a new reaction and hence new invasions. Thus, continuous reaction and invasion bring about continuous change in the environment and structure of biotic community. Ultimately, a biotic community is established, which is in perfect harmony with environment of the area. It remains permanent till disturbed. The first community which inhabits a bare area is called pioneer community. It has very little diversity and takes longest time to change the environment for invasion of the next community. The last unstable community in the area is called climax community. It is in perfect harmony with the physical environment. It is also termed as climatic climax community. It has maximum diversity and Nikkei specialization. The intermediate community between pioneer and climax communities of biotic succession from pioneer to climax is called seer. In any succession, each seeral stages is a temporary community. It may remain for a very short period or it may continue for years together. Sometimes some seeral stages are bypassed or completely missed. Successions beginning on watery habitats such as ponds, lakes, marshes, etc. are called as hydroc or hydrosier. Successions beginning in dry habitats are termed as xerarch or xerosier. 
The zero shears are of two types, lethal shear meaning sequence of succession stages on a barren rock and samo shear meaning sequence of succession stages on sand. The climax vegetation in any area is ultimately determined by its climate. The climax community throughout a climatic region is therefore the same whether it begins as a zero shear or a hydro shear. Now let us learn characteristics of succession. The ecological succession is characterized by the following features which we will discuss in detail. It tends to progress from unstable biotic community to stable biotic community that is complete adjustment with the environment. Its several stages are so regular and directional that an ecologist can often predict the sequence of future communities. In a successive several stages, there is a tendency towards an increase in species diversity, total biomass, niche specialization and humans content of the soil. It tends to progress from simple food chains to complex food webs. The habitat tends to modify from aquatic or dry conditions to moderately wet conditions. Succession of plants and animals communities occurs side by side. However, plant succession is easily visible. Now, let us study the different types of successions. Depending upon the nudity of area, biotic succession is of two types, primary and secondary. Number 1, primary succession. The biotic succession that occurs on a substratum devoid of earlier life is called primary succession. The sequence of successional stages of a primary succession is called pre -seer. Primary succession takes a very long time to reach the climax stage. Number 2, secondary succession. The biotic succession that occurs in an area which have become bare due to destruction of previously existing biotic community by fire, drought landslide, earthquake, etc. is called secondary succession. The sequence of successional stages of secondary succession is called subseer. Secondary succession takes comparatively much less time to reach the climax stage. Now, let us take some examples to understand succession. Succession on bare rock or Xerox or zero seer. It is sequence successional stages that occurs on bare rock. The bare rock is deficient of water. Hence, the sequence of several stages of succession is also called zero seer. The rock habitat is extremely xeric. Water and nutrients are extremely scarce. The conditions are aggravated by exposure to sun, wind and extremes of temperature. The first inhabitants are pioneers of such a habitat are usually lichens. In the temperate regions, cyanobacteria in tropical regions. The various stages that develop in lithosphere are first the lichen stage. Lichen propagules reach and grow into lichen thalli on the bare rock. When the latter is wet by rain or heavy dew, the pioneers on such substratum are the crustose lichens such as graphis, rhizocarpon and lacanora. 
they are slow growers and can stand extreme desiccation. The lichens produce acids which corrode rock surface and release minerals required for proper growth of lichens. Small depressions are produced in the rock by corrosion. Wind borne soil particles and organic matter from dead lichen parts collect in them with that is this invites larger lichens such as folios lichens like parmelia their expanded thalli overshadow and gradually replace the crustose lichens which eventually decay and die. The folios lichens retain more water and accumulate more soil particles as well as organic matter. It leads to the development of a fine layer of soil on the rock surface. Second, mass stage. The accumulation of soil and more humus favors upcoming of hardy masses such as polytrichum and vimia. Masses accumulate more soil and organic matter. The substratum remains moist for longer period which favors moisture loving masses like brayon etc. Next the herbaceous stage. The death and decay of the older masses often produce a mat on the rock surface. The mat formed by masses on the partially fragmented rock become suitable for the germination of seeds of annual hardy grasses like Eleusine, Aristicla and Poa. The roots of these plants accelerate the process of rock disintegration. This increases moisture and soil. Several small animals also invades the habitat. Then the shrub stage. Due to further withering of rocks, some xerophytic shrubs such as Rus, Robus invade the area of occupied by perennial grasses. The roots of the shrub reach depth causing further cracks in the rocky substratum resulting more soil formation. The soil is further enriched by humus formed from the fallen leaves and twigs. The shrubs shade the area and make it moisture. This invites hardy trees and several type of animals. And the last is climax stage. Many light demanding stunted and hardy trees invade the area occupied by shrubs. Gradually the environment becomes more moist and shadier. The light demanding shrubs and earlier trees give place to more shade tolerant and mesophytic species of trees. A steady state is reached between the environment and biotic community. It is called complex community. The type of climax depends upon the climate. It is a rainforest in a moist tropical area and a coniferous or deciduous forest in temperature area. A grassland appear in the area with less rainfall. Succession in a pond or lake is also known as hydrarch or hydrosphere. A hydrarch begins in a newly formed pond or lake. The water is deep in the middle and becomes progressively shallow towards the bank. The different stages of hydrosphere are First, the plankton stage. It is the pioneer stage of hydrosphere. Planktons means free floating bodies. The spores of planktons reach to the newly formed water body through wind, 
are animals. The planktonic stage mainly includes minute autotrophic organisms such as green flagellates, unicellular organisms, etc. These are called phytoplanktons. The population of these mix with silt and form a soft mud at the bottom of the pond, which favor the growth of next stage. The second stage is the submerged stage. The soft mud mixed with organic matter favors the growth of submerged plants like hydrilla, utricularia, etc. They are rooted in the mud and fill the water. Accumulation of silt and sand around the plants make the water body shallower. Death and decay of submerged plants enrich the newly formed soil with humus. This makes the area less fit for the submerged plants and more suitable for next stage. The third stage is the floating stage. The area is invaded by the species of floating level anchored plants like nymphia. These plants make the water rich in mineral and organic matter. Rapid growth of these plants shallows the water level on the periphery. The fourth stage is the reed swamp stage. The amphibious plants like typha, sagittaria, etc. replace the floating plants in the area. These plants produce abundant amount of organic matter and transfer huge amount of water. These plants build up a show by setting down sedimentary materials and humus. The substratum now changes to a marshy soil. The fifth stage is the sedge or marsh meadow stage. The marshy shore of the water body is invaded by carex. Some grasses like dicanthium and some herbs like cattla also inhabit the area. The plants add more humus in the area. The sixth stage is the woodland stage. The periphery of marsh meadow stage is invaded by some shrubby plants which can tolerate bright sunlight as well as waterlogged conditions. They cast shade and make soil dry by rapid transpiration. Some trees capable of tolerating sunlight and water logging such as populus also invade the area. These plants further lower down the water table. And the last stage is the climax stage. Many trees which have shade loving seedlings invade the area. They grow to greater height. The previous occupants disappear and give place to more shade tolerant and mesophytic species. Thus, the area once under deep water becomes finally transformed into a forest. It should be remembered that the nature of the climax community will depend upon the climate. Hope you have got a good insight on the ecological succession, that is how one community is replaced by the other. Until we meet again with more interesting topics, bye.